Here's an example of a categorical proposition or a categorical syllogism that involves the Aristotelian chart. So I'm in exercises 5.1, Roman numeral 2, and I'm going to do number 7, um, for which the answer is also in the back of your book. So here's the argument. It says all pranksters are exasperating individuals. Comma. Consequently, some leprechauns are exasperating individuals. Comma, since all leprechauns are pranksters. So you'll notice a couple of things about this example. One, the conclusion is not in an easily recognizable place. You may be looking for the conclusion at the beginning of an argument or at the end of an argument. Here, it's in the middle. You will encounter this pretty often with categorical syllogisms. So you should get yourself accustomed to looking for the conclusion because you'll remember the conclusion's extremely important because if you identify the wrong statement as the conclusion, the mood will be incorrect, the figure will be incorrect, and therefore everything that you do after that will be incorrect. So moving forward, we're going to find the standard form here We've got all R, consequently is our conclusion indicator, then we've got some R, and then another since, which is a premise indicator, and then all R. And again, the terms are doubled, so if I've got pranksters here, it's going to be somewhere else in the argument. Exasperating individuals, I'll use E. And then for leprechauns, I'll use L. So what I end up with here, when I put it into standard form initially, is all P are E. I know that consequently identifies my conclusion, so the statement right after consequently will be my conclusion, so I'll leave it until last, but since is going to indicate that this is a premise. So my second premise will be all L R P. I draw a large line for my therefore. Then I've got some L R E as my conclusion. Now I'm going to do what I did before. I'm going to identify the major term, which is E. It's again the major term because it is the predicate term of the conclusion. The L is the minor term because it is the subject term of the conclusion. And then P here and here, just coincidentally, as in the previous example, the P is the middle term. I've clearly labored, labeled my major, minor, and middle terms. Now I have to make certain that my major premise, which is the premise containing the major term, is listed first. My major premise is the one containing the major term E. It is, in fact, listed first. The second statement that's listed is the premise with the minor term, so it is the minor premise, and it is listed in the correct order. If it had not been listed in the correct order, I would have simply switched the places of these two. Now that would have changed the formation of my middle terms, so I had to make sure that it was in the correct order. 
Now that I know it's in the correct order, I can figure out the mood by, again, from top to bottom, listing the letter names of the statements. So in this example, it's A, A, I. If I think about the shirt collar, I can see very easily that this is figure one because of the pattern of the middle terms. So AAI one. Now if I look at my chart again, that's on page 262, I see I'm looking for AAI under figure one, but I don't see it here under figure one in the unconditionally valid forms chart. So that's an indication that my next step is to move to the second chart, the conditionally valid forms chart. And indeed, I do find the mood AAI under figure one in the conditionally valid forms chart or the Aristotelian one. So I follow across in the row to see what the required condition is. The required condition is that S exists or that the minor term exists. If it had been on this row, the condition would have been that M or the middle term exists. And if it had been on this row, then it would have been, the requirement would have been that P exists, the major term. So we need to see whether or not the minor term or the S exists in our original argument. So what we're looking for is whether or not the term has empty extension. You will remember when we talked about current King of England being a term that doesn't that has empty extension. So you can name the attributes or list the attributes and qualities of a current king of England, but you can't list actual current king of kings of England because they don't exist. For our purposes here, um, leprechauns do not exist in the world of logic. So we have to see that minor term stood for L, which is leprechauns. So if it stood for anything else, if that minor term L was anything else but something that doesn't exist, if it was um, light switches or lamps or whatever, that would have made this argument conditionally valid because the condition that L or the minor term, they're calling it S because it's the minor term, would have to exist. But because it doesn't, it doesn't meet that condition and therefore it's invalid from both perspectives. So again, on a test, you'd be asked to translate this, put it into correct standard form, list or identify the major, minor, and middle terms, tell me the mood and figure, and then tell me whether it's unconditionally valid, conditionally valid, or invalid from both perspectives.